WAND-TV marks 67 years of broadcasting this year, Central Illinois' first television station. While we've seen many changes over the years, one thing has it, our loyalty to you, the viewer. The year, 1953. WTVP comes on the air. Central Illinois' first TV station in its infancy created a lot of buzz across Central Illinois. Daytime programming during the 50s, live and locally produced shows like Romper Room, Al Corral, and The Frank Motti Show. The first weatherman was Lauren Boatman, Mr. Boats, or just Boats as he was affectionately called. He would continue that role for 35 years. I can be driving down the road going to Chicago or St. Louis and people will recognize me and they'll honk their horns <laughs> and wave and I have no idea who they are, but they know me. WTVP would become an affiliate of ABC Television, which added popular shows and programming to the daytime schedule. The year 1965 saw color programming from ABC. Then in February 1966, WTVP would become WAND-TV and a change in ownership from Metro Media to Lynn Broadcasting with increased power and a new tower and RCA antenna. The 1970s saw many more homes using TV. Jerry Slave, the main anchor at the time, along with Dick Westbrook, and who could forget Mike Cheever in the role of Dr. Terror. Easter morning, 1978, an ice storm. The tower here at the station would be covered and coated with ice, making for a dangerous situation. And the 1,100-foot transmission tower in Argenta would collapse. A new tower, antenna, and transmitter would come in 1979, the tallest in the state. The 1980s familiar faces, anchors Julie Moore and Mike Browning, Gail Simpson in the morning, and Bob Murray on weather, as well as reporter Doug Wolf. What we thought was so advanced in 1981 is so archaic when you look back now. All the edits were glued. So the photographers would sit in this small editing room, editing all the film, and they would literally come out with their heads floating every night from the smell of all the glue they were smelling. Uh, basically editing stories, a contact high. You didn't see any no smoking signs then. The newsroom had a layer of smoke in it. You'd walk in any time during the day and there'd be a cloud in the newsroom from people smoking. I have good reason to go back on occasion. Of course, uh, Julie Moore, who's now the mayor, uh, one of our former colleagues, of course, is the mayor. And, uh, you know, that's an example of someone who cares about the community and is, is reaching out and trying to make it a better place. I talk with Mike, a cancer survivor, who is now a public information officer for the city of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It was a great experience and I was blessed. You know, I was blessed by God to be able to do that for the period that I did. And um, I just appreciate that community and, and what it means to me. The people you work with become family. Oh, Bob Murray. You know, Bob and I were very, very close, and we would do a lot of public appearances. Doug and I didn't want to leave here. We loved to cater. This is where we wanted to have our family. WAND has meant so much to me and my family, so it's, and still does. The 1990s would bring coverage of the whistleblower at ADM, Mark Whitaker, exposing a price-fixing scheme for lysine. WAND News was front and center with coverage. ADM would pay a massive fine. In 2009, it would become the movie, The Informant. Hi, Don. The next showing is at 7 o'clock. Featuring cameos by on-air talent at the station, including Scott England. Well, they were watching me one night, The Informant people, and they said, there's the guy that's got the hairstyle from the 1980s. Scott now lives in Nashville, where he's a publisher with Gabriel Communications. He remembers two standout moments, being tased. Oh! I call that my greatest hit. That was my greatest hit. That was the story that everybody remembers. That was the number one on my list. And being tossed from a bull. We were such a family in the morning, and so we were very comfortable with each other. And uh, I always did the news with no shoes on, and I got caught barefooted a few times. Gail now teaches and says WAND will always be a special place. You're part of their world, and that's a responsibility. Tornadoes that ripped through Decatur last month caused mass destruction. April 1996, tornadoes would hit on consecutive nights. 1996 would see me named the evening anchor after starting as a reporter two years earlier. You're watching WAND News at 6. Soon I would be joined by Don Sterling at the desk and J.C. Fultz on weather. 2003, the station marked 50 years. 2005, another milestone for the station, switching affiliations from ABC 
after 53 years to NBC on Labor Day. Toledo-based Block Communications would assume full ownership two years later. 2006 saw the passing of boats at age 83, and that year WAND would introduce live Doppler radar. It was in 2012 we became the first station in the market to broadcast in high definition. First in HD. And in 2014, former weatherman Bob Murray would pass at the age of 66. From the talent on air to the people watching, the lens is us. Finding humor, finding common challenges and triumphs, finding community. And as we enter a new era and a new decade of broadcasting, we thank you, our viewers. It's always been bigger than any person who's in an office. It's been a service to the people who watch. And I think that's what WAND is all about. Wow, how time flies. Thanks to all those behind the scenes, to those of you watching, and to my editor, Erica Hola.